Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about QNAP NAS. I want to update everything we know about the TS253D, 453D and 653D. These are the new three flagship models from QNAP that are serving as the follow-up to the popular B and BE series. It's not a full-out replacement and I do think these two ranges are going to run uh, at the same time for a little period but it has to be said that everything the 53d has shown us so far has made it a superior box in almost every single way i'll of course be filming a comparison closer to release but for now let's talk about everything we know so far and everything new we've learned about these new 53d series nazi so if you've watched my other video about this a lot of this you're already gonna know but i do promise there are some extra little bits thrown in there that we've learned since then but let's summarize and go through the lot first and foremost we know what it looks like we've now got the chassis both front and back we know exactly how this device looks and unsurprisingly it does look a lot like the b they've gone for a slight color change there with a kind of uh kind of military gray there on the front and they've removed some of the features there based on the device. The front of the chassis has got that USB one-touch copy button there. And it's got the LEDs, but there's definitely no SD card slot. There's definitely no quick USB access. This is far more modelled on the BE series in terms of aesthetic design. Um, and the rear of the device looks exactly the same. It's got um, three USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports overall. Um, and an HDMI port there. Just the one, not dual HDMI this time. So this is an HDMI 2.0, so that's 60 frames per second 4K. You'll also notice there is no audio sockets. We've got none of the sound in out, no speaker, or both the 2, the 4, uh, and indeed the 6 bay. None of them have got that audio stuff. Unfortunately, it looks more and more like QNAF have gone with that experiment and gone, nope, it didn't fly, get rid of it. So I guess it's a way to keep things you know, affordable to a lot of people, get rid of the things that don't really work. I'm pleased to say that the LAN ports are definitely 2.5 GBE, two of them. So whether you go for the 2, 4 or the 6 bay, you are going to have a potential link aggregation speed of 5 gigabit Ethernet, which is great. And of course, to take advantage of that, you're going to need more bay. So in the 2 bay, unless you're using SSDs, you're not really going to see the potential of that. But the 4 and the 6, you'll certainly see advantages in that. Um, the PCIe, uh, which is PCIe um, Gen 2 times 4 so again, a higher generation than that of the previous generation of 251B and 253B range. So again, that will improve support of network interface cards. And we are seeing improved QM2 cards with up to four 2.5 GPU ports starting to arrive. Oh, I'm not sure that card will work with this device with the depth of that card there but i do think you can get a two port card easy as well as improvements in the uh, qm2 nvme and 10 gbe nic card series we're seeing lots more on that and this device will be ripe to proceed with that because that improved pcie will allow you to take advantage of ssd caching bays which this doesn't arrive with by default which is a little surprise for me i thought maybe they would include um ssd caching bays inside by default but apparently no they're not doing that but the idea of the PCIe upgradability improved on its predecessor is definitely something to write home about. Now, carrying on about stuff that we did know from before, but it's worth highlighting on again. The CPU inside is that J4125 processor, a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz processor, 64-bit x86 architecture. It can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz per core that's all four cores and that cpu does allow things like aes ni level encryption so much faster encryption than standard aes 256 bit and of course 4k and 1080p transcoding is possible with this device thanks to that cpu having integrated intel hd 600 graphics embedded so you will get great performance on this device be it to watch movies and transcode natively or in plex media server or if you're going to use it for business class applications like virtualization or surveillance with QVR Pro. There is a lot of potential thanks to that CPU. Now, we know what the base levels of memory are going to be. It's going to arrive with 4 gig of DDR4 memory or 8 gig. There's two different variants, and that goes for the 2, the 4, and the 6 bay. On top of that, this device will apparently only support up to 8 gig officially, but I'm willing to bet unofficially we can get this up to 16. But that's an argument between you and the CPU manufacturer. But we'll leave that till later in the day. Um, with the exception of that, everything else we know about it in its hardware architecture is very familiar. We've already talked about the, uh, the LAN ports, the USB, the HDMI, and the PCIe upgradability. 
and the memory upgrades are the same as well with the inside of the device just inside where the hard drives are two so dim slots there for ddr4 memory now it will support virtualization it will support both kinds of surveillance and with um, surveillance stations still being supported by qnap as well as a big push towards qvr pro with eight camera licenses being included with this as well as localized standalone surveillance access with a keyboard mouse and visual interface there's a lot of options here in terms of surveillance nothing that the predecessor didn't give you but just more of it with that improved cpu functionality it will support qts 4.4.2 uh, and it will support pretty much all of the applications you would expect even going through the different applications that are supported the ones that it does support it does support to pretty much the highest level obviously you will have to tailor the amount of memory inside i don't think the four gig model is going to give you the ability to transcode um, 1080p in plex at the same time as monitoring 12 cameras in surveillance and running a vm so you have to be a bit sensible but it can add um, more to it you can increase that memory as you see fit and moreover you can um, kind of balance things on the nose very very well we talk about virtual machines because of things like linux station and container station and virtualization station being enabled on this device it does give you a nice um kind of setup point to engage in all these different nas applications in 2020 with your data now apart from that with regards to its comparison with the existing be series you can definitely see what they've done insofar as um kind of uh, price versus hardware because when the original b first arrived it was covered in features and functionality it was really really good but it also arrived at an incredible price point and by incredible i don't mean the good kind i mean it was way too expensive even the two bay model that had that usb das connectivity and sd card slot and all that sort of gubbins and more memory but it was just and a remote control in fact it was just too darn expensive so they released the be and then people flocked to the be because it had all of the features and functionality they wanted and they didn't have to pay extra for the stuff they didn't think they'd use or if they did use it wouldn't be on day one the d the 53d is seemingly in the two the four and the six bay has gone ahead and gone straight down that route as it did with the be it's given people what they want and what they prioritize and removed what they didn't replacing it like the dual hdmi are gone in favor of one hdmi the one gbe is gone in favor of 2.5 gbe and the architecture of the device i think means its price point should be comparable maybe a fraction more than that of the be but only time will tell thank you so much for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed this i will be doing a comparison of everything we know on a spec level between the 453d and the 453be very soon i'll try to do the two and the six but you guys are very interested in the four bay from what i understand so it's only right that we focus on that one first thank you so much for watching we are learning more about the d series as we move forward with the 451d and the 453d mini just being announced for china only hopefully not for long but if you want to keep keep abreast of all things new in the world of network attached storage qnap or other do click subscribe click link if you've enjoyed this video so i know what you guys like and i can make sure these videos keep me meeting your expectations and visit the nas compare link in the description as well as visiting span.com for your nas needs 25 years in the biz they know what they're doing and they can help you get the right server thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time